Hello and welcome to today's Tiger webinar. I'm Lydia Palmer, Senior Director of Marketing and Communications in RIT's Division of Development and Alumni Relations, and I'm your moderator for today's webinar. We are happy to have you join us today, and we hope that you and our entire Tiger family are well and weathering this global challenge. We want you to know that the RIT Office of Alumni Relations is available to help all Tigers in the coming weeks with a variety of needs, including new virtual content, learning opportunities, and networking and career assistance in the coming months as our workplaces and our world work through the post-pandemic realities. We especially encourage everyone to connect to the RIT Alumni Association social media channels, including Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, where you will find up-to-date communications and opportunities to connect to other Tiger alumni in your region and your industry. Those links are found in the chat box, and the chat box can be opened by clicking on the chat tab at the right of your webinar window. The class of 2020 is finishing their time at RIT, but they are just beginning their journey into their lives of purpose. As a Tiger for Life, we need your help to welcome our graduates to the alumni body, encouraging them as both professionals and people in their next chapters. If you have words of wisdom, advice, or encouragement for this new band of Tigers, please share your thoughts with them at rit.edu slash alumni slash tiger dash wisdom. We also want to ask you to join us on May 8th as we celebrate our class of 2020 virtually. We will be streaming a virtual celebration on May 8th at 5 p.m. at www.rit.edu slash class of 2020. As you're aware, our soon-to-be fellow alumni won't be able to celebrate the way many of us did with a week of formal commencement ceremonies, so let's make this virtual event special until they can come back together for something more official. Many in our RIT family have asked how they can help our students and the university during this unprecedented situation, and we are incredibly grateful for those offers. Because a pandemic like COVID-19 touches us all, a global day of giving, Hashtag Giving Tuesday Now has been set for Tuesday, May 5th in response to the unprecedented need caused by the virus. As generosity has the power to unite and heal communities, RIT will be participating in this fundraising event to bring our community together in support of our students. You can get a head start by making a gift at the link in the chat box, and we thank you. We want to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the presentation tools. If you are joining from a remote location and are currently signed into your company's VPN, we encourage you to close that channel during the webinar to increase the quality of the webinar transmission. The platform is secure and does not require your VPN access. All attendees have joined in mute mode. But your questions can be answered, I'm sorry, your questions can be entered in the chat box at any time throughout this discussion. We will make every effort to address all your comments and questions throughout the webinar. You are joining this event using broadcast audio. If you wish to dial in by phone, dial in information is provided in the chat box. Live captioning is also being provided and you can find the link to access that in the chat box as well. Today's webinar will be recorded and made available complete with captions in approximately one week following today's event. All participants will receive an email with the link to the recording. If you have any technical questions, please go ahead and enter those into the chat box and we will do our best to get you the appropriate answers. And now, on to our webinar. We are happy to welcome head coach of the RIT men's lacrosse team, Jake Kuhn. In 10 seasons at RIT, Coach Kuhn has accomplished more than many coaches do in an entire career. He has led the Tigers to an astounding 188 to 23 record, 10 straight conference titles, 10 straight tips to, trips to the NCAA Division III tournament, and the Tigers' only two appearances in national championship games. He was chosen the 2011 United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association and the 2013 Men's Collegiate Lacrosse Association Division III Coach of the Year. He was also chosen the 2015 Liberty League Coach of the Year. Coach Kuhn has coached 72 All-Americans, 111 All-Conference selections, and nine straight Conference Players of the Year. Before he began his coaching career, Coach played professionally for the Rochester Nighthawks, the Rochester Rattlers, and the Boston Cannons. He played college lacrosse at Nazareth, where he excelled on the field. In 2009, he was inducted into the Nazareth College Hall of Fame. 
Coach Kuhn is joined by RIT's own athletic communications leaders. Tim Volkman is RIT's Director of Athletic Communications, and Steve Janes is Associate Director of Athletic Communications. They have a combined 30 plus years of experience covering college athletics, and they will be helping us with our uh, moderating the chat today as well. So go ahead and ask them any questions you would like to know the answers to. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining us today, and our audience is yours. All right, thanks, Lydia. Appreciate it. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We're looking forward to the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so of talking all things RIT lacrosse with uh, with Coach Kuhn. So um, we thought a good way to break down our time with everybody today would be to talk about the past. Um, to talk about the present and talk about the future of the team. So kind of let's jump right in and start with the past. You know, Coach, tell us uh, about the offseason leading up to the start of the 2020 year. And, you know, did you do anything <laughs> different? Was there anything you guys were doing um, uh, that was different than years past? Or was it just kind of uh, Groundhog Day, st status quo kind of thing? Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, the fall, uh, we did change some things around. It was it was uh, an earlier start than we typically, you know, do. We, we were typically starting in late September. We, we decided that uh, we wanted to get going with our fall ball a little bit early and uh, have our alumni weekend a bit earlier in, in September and hopefully some nicer weather, which it turned out great. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the first thing we changed, just just getting going a little bit quicker so the guys get back to school and, and uh, we wanted to get going. So... That was uh, one change that we made. Uh, we're excited uh, about the future of that change, and we're going to continue playing that uh, that golf tournament and having alumni weekend a bit earlier. Um, I also felt that having it off of the Brick City weekend kind of helped us stick together throughout the weekend, um, and so it was a great turnout. Um, but but the beginning uh, of the year, uh, we got jumped right in, kind of status quo with our, our strength and conditioning. Uh, Coach Kelly's been great with our team, and and uh, you know, we got right into the weight room, seemed like the guys were buying in. So that remained the same. And uh, as normal, we, we, we start uh, right away and, and go right through the break. Um, so that was one thing that remained the same. Uh, but we finished uh, with that Room to Smile tournament, uh, played Lemoyne, OCC, and uh, that, that was great, uh, great turnout. Um, the guys came to play. Uh, we learned a lot about ourselves. Um, a couple things that we really did change. Um, I think one big one was the fact that we didn't name captains in the off season. And we had decided even during fall ball to not name captains, which was something very different than what we typically had done. Um, it turned out to be really good. It turned out, you know, we were getting, we were getting leadership from all of our seniors, which is what we were hoping versus a select few or just the captains. Um, so that, that was a huge change, and, and uh, I think moving forward, that's something we're going to stick with. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, the seniors all did a great job. They were organized. Um, they were motivated. They had their ducks in a row. Um, they organized some small group, uh, leadership groups. Um, you know, really good stuff, um, kind of divide and, to, to help them divide and conquer the responsibilities. So uh, we liked it. It worked. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, we, we decided to let that flow right through uh, the, the post fall season and into uh, the spring season uh, when we eventually named our captains. But that was great. Uh, we want our seniors to be our leaders of the team. And they were. And, uh, you know, they, they set the tone for the guys. So um, that's something on each team that, that needs to be there. Um, and, and, and these seniors are doing a great job. Um, some other stuff that we did. Uh, we typically do some community service, uh, and again, these guys did a great job. They did a beach cleanup, a bone marrow drive. Uh, they did some work with the Ronald McDonald House, um, and then some stuff around the, the holidays for a couple families. So they, they did a great job. Uh, again, a lot of that was on their own, not, uh, not the coaches kind of projecting it on them. So we're proud of them for that. Um, and then one other big difference, um, we started um, – excuse me, we started um, this uh, mental training in the beginning part of the spring, in the preseason of the spring. And uh, that was really interesting. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from that. Um, it was a 
presentation down at the coaches convention. Uh, this guy, Mike Moore, he's with uh, a program called the Z Winning Mindset, uh, and he bases it off of uh, you know a wrestling background and a UFC background. Um, really, the the premise of that is to kind of get a hold of your your mental game, um, whether it be handling adversity, whether it be um, you know prepping for a game, whether it be an in-game scenario. Um, really what it's all about is the predator mindset. And I liked it because it was simple. Um, uh, one quote that he has is eyes in the front like to hunt. And uh, I think if you, if you really break that down and think about it, you know, you got a tiger out there hunting and he's, you know, focused in on his prey, he's, he's dialed in. Whereas uh, uh, eyes on the side like to hide is the second part of that quote, you know, where you're a prey animal, you're always kind of looking to the side and looking for that danger. So, um, that, that was kind of the premise of it. Um, you know, and we got into, uh, uh, some deeper stuff with him. It, it was an online training scenario that we did with the guys and, uh, we loved it. Um, they loved it. Um, one of the other things that I really liked about it is we talked a lot about being thankful for the opportunity to play, um, and, and getting rid of that fear of failure. And those are two, in my opinion, two huge items or pieces to, to, to winning games. So, um, I think that was a big, uh, big reason why we started off so strong. And I, I think it was, we, we were progressing through the season with that. So I think we were just going to get nothing but better in the mental game on top of uh, the physical game. As some of these alumni I know uh, physically, we're usually pretty fit. So we needed to start working on our mental game a little bit more. So that, that was an, another uh, thing that we changed up and we thought it was fantastic. Coach, you know, coach, you know, you start talking you, about, you start talking getting focused for the season. For this uh, season. How uh, are you feeling about the how are you team feeling about the team before the season started? And then <clears throat> after the big four and all start, how are you feeling about, uh, about that as well? Yeah. Um, we felt good about our team. Um, you know, every year is a little different and uh, you have to kind of learn what the team's all about and, and figure out the chemistry. Um, but we really liked our talent level and we liked our depth. Uh, you know, I, I think we had the best depth we've had in a long time, um, certainly at the midfield attack as well. So, you know, right down through, we had two, we had two face-off guys that we felt were, you know, all American caliber face-off guys and Jimmy and, and Monty. And then, uh, obviously with Walker Hare in the goal, we felt pretty comfortable there. Um, and then, uh, you know, right down to the offensive end, we had a veteran attack group you know, with, with Dawson and, and Quinn coming back and, um, you know, Ryan Tandy over there on the left side and, and Spencer coming into play. So we felt really good about, you know, those guys returning, but also the guys pushing for spots. I mean, those guys couldn't rest and be comfortable. Um, and, and then at the midfield, I mean, we had a ton of depth there. Really what was in question in my mind was where we were going to be at with our defensive unit, um, you know, losing a couple great LSMs and close defensemen. And, and Trevor and Chandler and those guys, but um, it turned out to be great. We had a great unit. Um, they were working well together. They were responding to each other. Uh, so we felt good about all of that stuff. Um, and I'm, like I said before, on top of that, we were getting the senior leadership that we needed, and uh, that was propelling us right into the spring season. Um, and then, you know, throughout the – course of that, that beginning part of the, the spring when you have a couple uh, scrimmages and, and then your first few games, uh, you're not sure what to expect. Uh, but but I, I think as we started to go, uh, we, we were learning about what we were made of and who we were. And uh, I think really what the best part was is that we were gaining trust in each other and, and understanding that, hey, yeah, we, we have all that we need here and um, we, we can do this. Um, so it, it was going, I guess, uh, in the right direction. Um, I know I personally was excited for uh, kind of those next next few games that we had on the on the schedule. It was a, it was a tough stretch coming up. I think we had four ranked, three or four ranked opponents in a two week period. So you know, when when you when you go through a stretch like that, you really kind of find out what you're made of and and, and who you are. So um, it's pretty unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to, to go through and, and see what what type of team we really had uh, but again we, we were all uh, excited about the year I mean how are the guys feeling I mean 
when how you are got the guys to, feeling? You got to that 4 0 start, and you like you said, you had that two week stretch of ranked teams coming up four or five games. Were the guys excited for this opportunity after getting off to such a good start, or, you know, were they anxious about it, or were they just full speed ahead? Yeah, I think um, going into that Mustang Classic each year, we, uh, you know, I think the guys are excited. They know what that's all about. They know it's, uh, you know, kind of in the Division Three limelight. Um, they know we're going to be t- tested down there, um, you know. And, and for the first time this year, we had uh, St. Lawrence uh, down at the Mustang Classic, which was different. So, you know, they know the importance of that game being a league opponent uh, and, a, and a talented league opponent. So, you know, I think the guys are excited. Um, there's no question. You know, uh, I think we, we do a good job from the coaches right down through of, of kind of moving on to the next game. And, you know, um, after we finished up with Clarkson, I think the guys were really looking forward to uh, spring break and and certainly the Mustang Classic and, and that stretch in general. Um, you know, you have Amherst on, on that stretch too. So that's been a, a huge contest over the past few years. So, uh, yeah, there's no question they, they were – dialed in you know kind of along those same lines coach take us through that week you know the week you were down uh in maryland you know you were, you were it was spring break um you know i'm sure everybody has a story from uh when they heard athletics were canceled across the board you happen to be uh in a different state with uh with a team of uh men's lacrosse players so kind of Take us through that week, kind of uh, how you heard, uh, where you guys were, kind of the uh, the feeling of the team when uh, they found out. Yeah, it was a great week until about Wednesday afternoon uh, when things really got going uh, the wrong direction. Um, yeah, we're in, we're in Baltimore again. We we decided this year to stay down in the Inner Harbor. Uh, we were, you know, nice setup, um, kind of status quo for the beginning part of the week. We, uh, you know, we're going to practice every morning, um, you know, working on our scout stuff, uh, you know, practicing basically 930 to 1130 every morning and, and, and preparing for the weekend. Um, overall, the team, the team morale was good. Uh, we were excited. Um, obviously, in the back of your mind, you're seeing some stuff on the news and, you know, seeing all of uh, this, this stuff going on with the COVID virus and, you um, I think there was certainly some doubt creeping in earlier in the week, but we kept talking about, you know, what we were talking about in our mental training is to kind of stay focused on what we can control and, you know, um, make sure that we're doing our job and, you know, keep progressing throughout the week here and we'll deal with whatever's thrown at us. So um, once, once we got to uh, Wednesday, um, it started to get pretty real and, uh, you know, we, we were getting a little nervous, uh, that man, what's going to happen here. So, you know, uh, let me back up here. So Tuesday was a big decision for us. We, we had uh, a trip to DC planned and, um, uh, we're going to go to the Washington Wizards game that evening. And, uh, the guys decided that they didn't want to go to DC for the afternoon and, and tour around and walk around. But we, we all agreed that, yeah, maybe we would still go to the Wizards game. So um, we did do that, uh, which was a great little little event for the guys to get away. Um, you know, but looking back at it, I, you know, going to a public place like that maybe wasn't the best idea. Uh, but but at that time, we didn't really, you know, know or understand. And, and um, we had a good time. It was fun. The game was good. Uh, and then we roll into Wednesday. We get out to practice. And, um, you know, I, I really tried to keep the guys focused on practice well at practice and you know not listening to to the rest of the stuff that was going on and really preaching uh what coach mike was talking about with us so we uh next heard about amherst canceling and uh that's when really things got real and uh guys started questioning what was going on and what was going to happen and um i believe that was tuesday afternoon maybe maybe wednesday i think um, so we kind of just like, all right, well, that's, that's not good, but we're still on here. And I was talking to coach Canabene from Stevenson about the, uh, the event, uh, the Mustang classic. And he said, we're still on. So we kept going, um, kept practicing and, and 
next thing you know, a couple teams are dropping out of the tournament and we're readjusting the schedule. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to decide what to talk to the guys about and what, what to talk to them about. And, and, uh, eventually got down to eight teams and we were still a go come, I think Thursday morning. Uh, and then late around lunchtime, I got a call from Paul and he said, you know what, we're, we're going to cancel this thing. So, um, I, I had to then let the guys know that it was canceled. But um, before that, I, I was still working on trying to get a game in with York or FNM or somebody down in the area uh, so we could get at least a game in, maybe two, before we went home. Um, and then about an hour later, I saw in the news that the uh, NCAA basketball tournament was canceled. And when that happened, I, I knew that this was going south quickly. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. And, uh, you know, so we ended up getting on the phone with, uh, Mr. Spiotti and the admin team and, uh, deciding that, uh, we better not play any games. We better get on the bus and head home. So well, that's what we did. We packed up and decided to head home. Um, and then of all things on the way home, uh, uh, the NCAA decided to uh, cancel the season. So we were on the bus ride home when, when we found out and, um, there, there's no place that, you know, to find out information like that, it would make it easy. But being on the bus confined and, um, you know, the guys actually saw it on social media kind of as I saw it. So I knew I had to address it and we did. And, you know, there was just devastation, um, upset, crying, devastation. So sure. uh, it was a long bus trip home. Sure. Um, started out as a great week, ended it in a total disaster. So that was the week. And what did you guys do when you got back? Uh, we got back um, a little bit later that night, I think, you know, 10 o'clock, maybe 9 or 10 o'clock. Um, basically just got back and tried to encourage the guys to make good choices and, uh, you know, support each other. I mean, there's really, as a coach, you feel helpless because, you know, you go home to your family and, and they go off and they're in their dorms or in you know, their houses and you just, you know, preach to, to make good decisions and that we're in this together and this, this is stuff that we can't control. So, um, you know, we set a meeting for the next day to kind of wrap up, wrap up, uh, the season, so to speak, we, we typically do that. Um, you know, but it, but it happened really fast. It was, it was, uh, it was tough. Um, I, one thing that I've, after I saw the basketball was canceled and then the lacrosse season was canceled, I knew this was serious and I felt that uh, getting these guys home to their families was the number one priority. So I didn't want to delay, you know, having a meeting until Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I wanted to get them in, have the meeting, uh, do what we needed to do and get them out of there. That makes sense. Um, so let's talk to present, you know, um, what have you been able to do with the team? since um you know how, how are the guys where where what's their mindset or you know are they adjusting to online classes uh still got sticks in their hand uh talk about the team or where we are now yeah well a lot's happened since uh you know the end of the season and until now um you know it's really was a struggle at the beginning to kind of you know figure out where these guys were at mentally um you know, you, you, you want to try to touch base with all of them and, and guide them along. Um, so I think right at the beginning, it was a bit of a struggle for the guys to, you know, kind of realize, man, this is over. Uh, you know, we got to go home. We've got to pack up. You know, it was a lot thrown at them. Um, but uh, then to, to back up here, we, we had uh, the, the extra time for spring break. So the all right it kind of allotted us that extra week for spring break, um, which I think was a good thing. So these guys could kind of get organized and figure out, you know, what the next chapter looked like. Um, you know, these online classes uh, are new to everybody. You know, the professors needed time. The kids needed time. Um, we all needed time to kind of adjust and figure out our schedule and figure out how it was all going to work. Um, you know, uh, a couple things that happened in there that really kind of turned things around uh, were number one, the NCAA granted uh, everyone a year of eligibility back. That was like that day and that, that news was kind of the, 
you know, the bright star in the distance, like, wow, okay, we've got, we've got a chance here. So, um, you know, we immediately started talking with the seniors uh, and, and trying to figure out, hey, who, who, who can make this work? You know, who can, uh, who can come back and actually play out their senior year? And to be honest, we're still working on that. But that, that was a glimmer of hope for, for the team and kind of gave everybody a, a little bit of a positive vibe versus uh, what we've been dealing with, uh, which, which, was, which was pretty tough. Um, you know, RIT also has been great. They give uh, all the students a, a pass-fail option for their classes. Uh, I know for me, working from home, it can be challenging at times, uh, you know, with my kids around and, and so on. Uh, so I can only imagine that I'm trying to take classes at, at home and, and, you know, perform at a high level. So, you know, RIT did, did, did it right and, and gave them a pass-fail type option, you know, where they could uh, – you know, still still get a high GPA, but if, if things aren't going quite like they want, they can go with a pass fail option. So I, I thought that was great. Um, so really, we've been you know just trying to keep in touch with these guys, keep them informed. Um, they've been going through their workouts with Coach Kelly, uh, so that's been good. Nothing mandatory, but they're there for him, for them to do, and, and Coach Kelly's there for them. Um, you know, whether it's text messages, whether it's emails, phone calls, it, it's just been constant communication with the guys. Um, you know, we we uh, also did a, a virtual 5K. Uh, thanks for all those folks that contributed and, and took part. But, um, you know, that virtual 5K, um, I'll back up one more time here. We, we were planning to go uh, to this place called Nick's House in Philadelphia when we went to play Amherst. Um, back in March, <clears throat> obviously we didn't make it to that. And so, um, the Nick's house is, uh, part of the headstrong foundation. And, uh, I felt like we needed to do something collectively as a group. Uh, this, this was right after the season ended. So I felt we needed to do something collectively as a group. And this, this was a great opportunity that came out with this last, um, last shift virtual 5k, which is basically, you know, a fundraiser, but more to, uh, you know, get the group out and, get anyone involved in the lacrosse community out and uh, run a little 5K on your own. Uh, and our, did, our guys did a great job, a lot of participation, and they put together a little video, which was which was pretty clever, uh, all on their own. So uh, I thought that was cool. Uh, we, we raised over $5,000 for Headstrong, so proud of them for that. Um, so other than that, I mean, for lacrosse, you know, just like the summer, we're relying on the guys to, to you know, kind of – get self-motivated, you know, they, they need to, uh, to get out, shoot, wall ball, whatever they can to improve. Um, you know, it, it's important that they stay in shape, they keep the stick in their hand, you know, they certainly need to finish school strong, but uh, they can't forget about that other stuff. And, and to do it on your own is, is difficult, but, uh, you know, don't, don't look for sympathy over here. Um, there's, there's plenty of time in the day to get better, so hopefully they're doing that, and uh, I hope they're doing that. Because the 2021 roster is going to be pretty loaded up, and uh, we need everybody to, you know, work their hardest. Coach, real quick, before we get too far, uh, there's a question here online. What was your 5K time? People want to know. <laughs> that's that's my own business. <laughs> None of yours. <laughs> there was a second part to that question. They were wondering what Wilkie's time was, and I'm I'm, I'm gathering his answer will be similar to yours. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I'm not sure what Wilkie's time was. I'm not sure Wilkie ran a 5K, but I did run the 5K. I video to prove it. Uh, it was not a good time. Um, I've improved since then. I've been working out with my son, so I'm ready to go now. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you, you touched on a little bit keeping in communication with such a big roster. You got you had 51 guys on the roster this year. Um, you know, that's a lot of guys to keep track of, uh, you know, you mentioned emails and text messages and things like that. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about the communication and keeping your guys in the cross shape, uh, during yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, the cross shape is, is difficult. Um, I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that, but, uh, keeping them in shape. I mean, we're relying on coach Kelly, um, to, to give us some, you know, some workout plans. Um, we're relying on these guys to be self-motivated. 
uh, you know, we're trying to, you know, really check in on these guys, but being accountable for your actions is really what, what it comes down to. Um, but in terms of communication, uh, I, there's no, there's no flaw there. We're, we're constantly, constantly communicating with these guys through email, through phone call, uh, text. We, we have this, um, this software that we use uh, where we can mass text with these guys. Uh, so if I need to hit everybody up quick, I can I can really give them some information fast and, and get them up to speed. Um, and we also can share, uh, you know, documents on there or video on there. Uh, so th that's a great tool for us uh, to, to keep the guys kind of as one. Um, you know, other than that, uh, the guys also have their their groups, their leadership groups. Um, you know, so they might have uh, one senior in charge of, eight or nine guys. And, and, you know, if I need to, I can reach out to the leadership group groups and they can kind of pass the information down. So, um, we kind of have our tree, uh, we have, we have our captains as well. So we, we have plenty of ways that we can, uh, communicate and keep these guys busy. Um, right now the main focus is, is school and finishing school and, and, um, you know, the finals finals week is going on right now. So, you know, uh, that, that's kind of our main priority and we've been, touching base with the guys to make sure they're, they're on top. Coach, there was a question on here that says, is the NCAA limiting what kind of contact you can have this spring? Uh, no, actually, they opened that up um, and have given us a little bit more flexibility. Uh, that was something else I was going to mention. Um, typically in the off season, in, in the summer in particular, uh, you're not allowed to kind of keep, keep – uh, keep track of the guys or keep them accountable for their actions. Uh, they don't know this yet. So hopefully they're watching, but um, they're giving us permission now to keep track of what they're doing. Uh, you know, did you lift today? Did, you know, what did you do on your lift today? You know, so we can follow that and monitor that, um, which is something that you haven't been able to do. It's been more like, Hey, go, go, go take care of business, go lift, go run, go work out, go play. Um, and hopefully they do that. Now we're able to, uh, uh, you know, kind of keep our keep our hands on them and, and, and you know watch them a little bit more closely. We're still trying to figure out how that's going to look or how we're going to monitor that and keep them accountable. But um, that is a little bit of a, a piece that gives us a little more flexibility. All right, um, people have been asking about the future, and we're kind of uh, on to the future portion of the show today. Um, you know, talk about your roster. People are looking, you know, they're kind of asking about what our roster is going to look like next year. Um, good question. <laughs> good question. Um, so right now uh, I'll start with the senior group. You know, we're, we're really trying to figure out uh, who can come back. Um, we had 10 seniors and, and we're trying to figure out of the 10 who, who can come back and, and compete for their fifth year their final year. And, um, right now I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. I, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get five or six of those guys back and, and maybe seven or eight. Um, so I'm pretty confident that, uh, we're going to have a good group of the seniors back. Um, we have a good size freshman class coming in, uh, 15 guys, and we have uh, a few other, uh, guys who didn't play this past year who will, will be coming back on the roster too. Um, you know, uh, Patrick Shumay being one of those guys who, who we, we missed last year uh, and due to injury. But, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's uh, going to be trying. Um, we're going to have a large roster, and we're going to have to probably get creative and, and you know, kind of figure out uh, who's going to be on the roster. Um, you know, uh, more than ever, this, this is going to be a competitive year, you know, uh, you, you, you've got to put the time in the off season and come in and make this roster. Um, and and it, it's not any different than, than any other school in the country right now, uh, given the situation, uh, unless maybe the Ivy leagues, um, where they don't have graduate degrees or, or, or allow the kids to play a fifth year. But, um, you know, so we're, we're going to have to get creative. Um, we're hoping the guys come back ready to go. And, and to be honest, I'm pretty excited about what the roster could look like. Um, I mean, the, the the talent was there this year, and if we get a bunch of those seniors back, back with the leadership 
ability that they were demonstrating. I think we'll, we're going to get the leadership and uh, I think sky's the limit. Um, the other issue we have is uh, the transfer portal. Um, <laughs> never seen anything like it. Uh, we, we had this, the transfer portal started a few years ago where, you know, if you're looking to transfer, you put your name in to the portal and, you know, basically it's a recruiting process all over again. Um, right now it's exploding. Uh, obviously, given the situation, there's kids of all divisions, division one, two and three, who are, are looking for homes to play their final year. Um, so that's that's exploding right now, which puts us in a bit of a, a predicament, uh, given that we have a large roster. Um, you know, do you take a transfer? Do you, do you take any transfers? Um, I think we'd be crazy not to at least entertain, you know, the idea of bringing in a transfer to, uh, given that there's a lot of division one talent out there and some high end division three talent in division two. So, you know, nothing's come about at this point, but, uh, there is a lot of activity going on in that transfer portal, uh, that, that could possibly, you know, round out the roster. Um, you know, um, I feel good about the talent level. Uh, we, we feel really good about, uh, you know, the incoming class. We feel that, you know, it's strong. I know we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, I think the key thing is getting the leadership back in place and getting that chemistry with the, the amount of guys we have, getting that chemistry locked in as quickly as possible. Uh, that'll be vital. Um, you know, We'll see where it goes. I, I, you know, if, if I, I want these, I want these seniors to have a senior year. So if we can get all ten of them back, we'll take all ten of them back, uh, and we'll figure out the rest. Uh, these guys deserve it. Um, they're great kids. They're great leaders. Uh, they're great players. They, they deserve to play a full senior year. Um, you know, so whatever we got to do uh, within the rules, we're, we're going to try to get these guys back on the roster and get them playing again. You know, for the guys who can't come back, we're, we're, we're still trying to figure out how to kind of honor those guys and, you know, give them a, a true senior day. And, and uh, you know, if we do have a few of those guys, I, I think we'll probably try to organize something around alumni weekend uh, to uh, to present them with a um, senior gift and, and give them their due diligence. Um, <clears throat> Coach, to go along with the whatever, hopefully the, all the seniors come back. How does the incoming class look? I know you've got, you said 15 guys coming in. Um, talk about the recruiting class a little bit. And also, you also have to be looking at another recruiting class. How are you, how are you working on recruiting, you know, during the pandemic? Yeah. Um, yeah, we the incoming class is strong. It's um, well-balanced. Um, I think if, if there's anything in this class, it's good balance uh, from, you know, face off goalie, you know, right down through. I think I think we've got good, solid balance within the group. Um, we've got a, a few guys, five guys, actually, that, that, that didn't play this past year who will be coming back to the roster as freshmen. So that's going to give us a great start. Um, we've got uh, Michael Doty, who's an attackman for us, lefty attackman, who, who's a you know, has all kinds of ability, um, you know, uh, a great little player. Uh, we got uh, Kyle, Kyle uh, Burbank, who's a goalie, uh, who will be back, you know, as a freshman this coming year and, and really athletic kid, uh, a lot of upside to his game. Um, you know, certainly a guy can get out of the net a little bit as well. Uh, and then we've got uh, a couple really solid middies that will be returning, Keegan Lockner from Albany, um, uh, the kid showed a ton of promise. He's very, very athletic. Uh, he shoots the ball well, uh, can play two way, you know, can play defense, can play offense. Uh, you know, it, it, the way the game's going right now, I think that's invaluable stuff. Um, but but he, sh he showed a ton of promise. Uh, and then uh, another young man at the midfield, Cooper Guttel, kind of the same, uh, could play a two way role if we needed him to. Um, uh, but a good little athlete. And then lastly, uh, uh, another attackman, Dylan Bruno. So we've got these these five guys returning uh, back to the roster here that, that's going to give us a little bit more maturity in the group, um, uh, but a lot of talent as well. Um, so then, you know, to, to, to talk about the 2020 class, uh, we've got uh, a couple of Fogos that we like, uh, one of which being uh, Nate Farrell's brother, Nick Farrell. 
Uh, if I'm sure a lot of these guys remember uh, Nate, obviously been in the MLL for a few years and, and you know, uh, was an All-American for us. So excited to get his brother in here, taking some draws. Uh, um, and we've got, uh, what do we got, five defensemen. That includes long sticks. Uh, some, some big rangy fellows. Uh, have one kid, 6'5", uh, 6'6". Six, six, six. Um, another kid from Connecticut who's you know, like 6'4". Um, we also have another brother coming in, uh, Caleb Commandant, uh, Quinn's brother. So uh, kind of getting the younger brothers to, to come in and join the family is, is great. Um, he's very talented. We're excited about him. Um, you know, he, he was recruited heavily by a bunch of Division One schools. So he chose wisely. Um, <laughs> and then we have uh, we have uh, uh, between the attack and attack and Midfield, we have uh, seven offensive guys um, that, uh, you know, we feel good about. Uh, we have two uh, a set of twins coming in uh, for the first time. So that'll be interesting. A couple guys, uh, Finner and Brothers, out of, out of the Boston area. Uh, so it'll be kind of a cool thing to have on the team. Um, and then another defensive midfielder. So, you know, with the talent level of the group, we put as much emphasis on the character of the group and – and uh, we feel this is a great group of young men, um, you know, that they're going to have impact on our program at some point, whether it's right away. I don't know. Uh, we never know. Uh, so we'll see when they get here. Um, hopefully they fit in well and can pick up the schemes quickly and see where they can contribute. Um, and then in terms of recruiting, you know, we're, we're, we've been that class has been pretty much finalized. We've been, you know, kind of finalizing a, a couple guys over the last month or so, but it's pretty much been finalized since, you know, December. Um, you know, we've had to tidy up a few things over the last few months, but we've had that class done for a while. So we're really <clears throat> focusing on the junior class currently, the 21 class, and uh, that's going to be a challenge. Um, that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, you know, first of all, the high school season is canceled. So we're not going to see any videotape of them from their junior season. Um, potentially the summer recruiting events are all going to be canceled. Uh, so we're not going to see them play live. Um, so it's going to be quite something. And, and uh, really what we're trying to do is uh, um, stay in contact with the guys that we've seen already uh, from this past summer or fall, um, talk to club coaches, you know, get, get their feedback on the, their guys. Um, you know, it might be a year where we need to maybe, you know, kind of, kind of listen and trust the, the people, you know, um, and, and take a chance here or there. Um, but we're going to do our best. Hopefully, and hopefully uh, by the end of the summer, we can have a prospect day uh, or have some recruiting events that we can, uh, you know, attend and see a bunch of these kids. Um, you know, really what it comes down to is, is getting good evaluations on these guys and getting them on campus. That's the other part with campus being closed. You can't get them on to see campus, and that's a huge part of the, the process. So, um, again, RIT's done a good job. They've offered some virtual, uh, you know, tours and a bunch of virtual options um, that, uh, that we, we definitely will be taking, taking advantage of. Um, other than that, I mean – just trying to find kids at this point, you know, however we can, we, we need to just find kids and, and get in touch with them and uh, hopefully at some point see them and, and go from there. Talk well, about, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Tim. You know, what else? You know, is there anything else you're excited about for 2021 or the future of RIT lacrosse in general? You know, what are you, what are you most excited about? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of doom and gloom and a lot of things that people are down about, but I mean, what, what can we be excited about? What can the alumni be excited about this program in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I, I, I hope they're excited uh, and I, I hope the guys are excited uh, for what could be in 2021 with our team. Um, you know, that, that's, that's gotta be first and foremost, you know, right from the top down we need, we need to get excited about this coming year and get get over what's happened and and as we talked about at the beginning we keep our eyes forward and and focus on what we can focus on and control and that's that's uh putting together the best 21 team we possibly can 
um, you know, and and gunning for that championship. I mean, that that's got to be a number one priority. Um, you know, so other than that, I mean, the stadium uh, is something that we've been discussing for for quite some time. Um, that's a, that's a, a project that I know I have been pushing for for a couple of years now. Um, RIT has really kind of jumped jump behind the idea and, and uh, has, has committed to, to doing that stadium. So we're really excited about that. Um, the tentative plans were to, to get started, um, you know, kind of late fall, winter time, uh, but I, I'm not really sure what at the, you know, what time at this point we should expect that, that stadium to get started. But, um, obviously, there's bigger fish to fry right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that, you know, takes precedent over any construction or or any any lacrosse or anything like that. So we're kind of in a holding pattern to see what's going to happen with that stadium. But but uh, word is that uh, it's happening. It's it's they've committed to it. Um, you know, I know they're they're working on getting some designs together currently, and uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But that that's really exciting news. Um, I think with our facilities currently, we've got a great setup. Um, but uh, getting a stadium in place, you know, a high level stadium uh, is a game changer. And uh, you know, I, maybe I'm speaking on my own behalf, but uh, I know I'm fired up for it. <laughs> and then. Uh, I'm surprised that I haven't really been looking through the questions here, but um, I'm sure that everyone's wondering about this whole Division One uh, idea. Um, you know, I, I really don't know where that's going to go at this point. Um, you know, I think uh, it's intriguing, it's interesting, uh, it's uh, it's it's something that if RIT decides to do it, we're we're going to jump in and go full throttle and and uh, uh, you know try to win a Division One championship. So. Um, but, but as of right now, we are, you know, kind of in a holding pattern there. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll let the, the board discuss it. We'll let them do their research and, uh, we'll see what, what they decide and we'll take it from there. But, uh, yeah, that, that's in terms of, in terms of the future and, you know, what, what we feel strongly about, I think, I think those are some of the key things, um, you know, the, the, the 21 team, though, I, I get more excited every day after, you know, talking. Uh, we've been talking to, to one of our senior defensemen. I have been over the past couple of days, and uh, he may have the opportunity now to, to come back and, and pursue uh, a minor, um, which he wanted to do, but uh, he also wanted to graduate and move on. So uh, th this may work out. The NCAA has given some flexibility with that as well. So, uh you know, to get a to the guy get a guy like that back and give him the opportunity um, to, to finish out his senior year. I mean, that's the that's fantastic stuff. Um, I would do anything to uh, get these guys their final year. Coach, we had a question from one of the alums, and he was asking how the alumni, you know, can help out the team. Yeah, um, it's a good question. I, I think. Uh, I think we've had fantastic alumni support from from the start, at least since I've been at RIT. Uh, I've I've seen nothing like it. Um, we've we've had fantastic support, whether it's um, monetarily, whether it's uh, coming to games, whether it's just getting online and watching. Uh, certainly, uh, for the for the two championships that we competed in, uh, that was that was like nothing else. I mean, I was getting comments from from other uh, from other programs like, man, you guys throw a serious tailgate. So, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're getting, we're getting some, some great support with the alumni. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything in particular I would, I would come out and say we, we need at this point. We're, we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, I think once the stadium gets rolling, uh, we may need uh, uh, some support with that in terms of uh, maybe finding sponsors or, you know, some, some, uh, some financial uh, contributions, um, stuff like that, to help pay for it. But um, right now, we're we're going to wait and see what that looks like and and see what we need to do. Uh, but uh, I, I can't thank all of the alumni enough uh, for all their support. Um, I, I was expecting to get berated on uh, the chat today. I haven't seen anything too out of hand. So uh, it, it's a it's a it's a great relationship we have. I, I'm looking forward to continuing that. 
couple questions about fall ball coach. Um, what, uh, you know, what's the plan for fall ball? Do we have anything at this point or is it still kind of up in the air based on uh, direction RIT goes as a campus? Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're up in the air. You know, I think hopefully, hopefully RIT can, can start on time and get, get everybody back, you know, in late August and get everyone on campus and back to, uh, to, to learning in the classroom and, um, you know, the virtual thing has been, been okay. I think some, some guys enjoy it or like it. Other guys, you know, kind of realize that, Hey, I don't like going to class, but it's way better that, you know, you learn a lot more in class than you do virtually. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that, um, we're able to get going on time. And I know for me at this point, I'm just planning on starting at a normal time, planning our fall events. And I'm just going as we normally would, as we did last year anyway, and starting in early September. And uh, if, if things change, I'm just going to roll with that and, and adjust if needed. You know, so if we need to push things back a month, we'll push it back. Um, sure. if, if they decide that uh, things are going to be virtual, I'm not really sure what we'll do. Um, we're going to have to kind of kind of see how this unfolds over the next couple months and, and go from there. Um, you know, fall ball's great. It's great for the freshmen in particular. They get acclimated. They get to know their teammates. Um, we get to know each other, uh, you know, but really good for the freshmen. Um, you know, if, if it ends up that we don't have a fall ball, then we'll live with that. Um, you know, hopefully by the time January rolls around, we're, we're full go and uh, we have our full season. I mean, you know, after, after you miss out on a season, you know, you, you kind of put things into perspective here and, um, uh, you realize what's important and uh you know if if we get to january and things aren't back to normal then it's it's tough tough luck i guess let's sure. hope it is um there's another question <clears throat> um it's regarding squad size so it, it reads with so many players coming back and a big incoming freshman class uh can you have a practice squad among, within the D3 rules, like, uh, you know, kind of like some of the <clears throat> bigger football teams may have, you know, guys that aren't necessarily on the everyday squad, but they're on the practice squad. Any any inclination of anything like that coming down the road with just the, the weird situation that we're under? Yeah, we, we haven't gotten into um, roster limits at this point. Uh, it, it's It's a fine – line it's a, it's a tough situation right now uh given that um you know i'm not i'm not saying that rit's budget will change but a lot of schools budgets are changing uh for the worse um you know so uh i i don't know where that would put us in terms of uh, you know the budget um obviously where you get into most of your expenses within a roster or, or during your travel uh so if you did have a practice roster you know again uh may not be quite as expensive, uh, but, but it's certainly something we, we, we've thought about and may consider, um, you know, if hopefully they give us a couple extra roster spots and we can travel a few extra, uh, we will see, uh, we'll work on that with our min team and, and see what the right move is. Uh, so we have, you know, the RIT rules, then we have the NCAA rules that we need to abide by. You know, you certainly can do it per the NCAA rules. Uh, the problem with having a practice roster, is that you still use up your eligibility uh, so you know hate to uh, hate to uh, have a young man just be on the team for practice purposes and use up his year of eligibility um, you know if, if needed like we have in the past you know we have some five-year guys you know maybe we uh, have them uh, remove themselves from the roster and, and come back as a repeat freshman the following year so there, there's some creative ways we can we can uh, kind of finagle with the roster size. Um, hopefully we, we get uh, a little bit of flexibility from the MN team as well, given the situation and uh, we'll figure it out. All right, coach. I think uh, we've, we've answered most of the questions on the chat here. There's been some good comments here. Uh, there was one, a personal phone call from a coach was very helpful in my son's mindset. So it sounds like the communication piece um you're, you're you're hitting it in spades coach so a lot of appreciative people out there i'm sure especially in times like this um 
Yeah. Let's see. We're trying. You know, we, we, we I didn't mention this earlier, but we do. Uh, uh, you know, we have our staff here, and we're we're trying to kind of divide and conquer and divide up the responsibility of of, of our current current uh, you know current players and incoming guys. And you know, when you're talking about you know 50 plus guys, it's you know a, a tough thing to kind of keep in touch every single day. So. Um, you know, and these guys probably don't want to hear from her, their coaches every single day. So, um, no, but it, but it's important. Uh, their 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 mindset is huge. They're um, they're we're all in tough times. We're all dealing with uh, a different way of life right now. Um, you know, it's stressful in different ways, and and just talking through it or, or having somebody there to talk with is is important. Uh, I I hope our guys know and understand understand that even if we don't call them they 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 should know at this point because we preach it that they can pick up the phone and call us at any time about anything and uh we'll be there to discuss it or talk or you know listen so um you know i think uh you know in our program that's that's that open door policy is there and, and no one understood so um yeah thanks for the comment Got an interesting question here. <laughs> you get to add one alumni for a senior year. Who do you add? And they have a list. They have a they list, but I wanted to see where you went first with, with, without being prompted. Where would you go? How, how come I can't see these questions? I'd like to see who posted that. I can probably guess. It's he's a, but, he's uh, a, a yeah. I, I don't get into I don't get into answering questions like that. Um, <laughs> Just so you know, there's, there's way, way the too many good options to uh, to narrow it down. Wilkie pleaded the fifth, fifth as well, coach. So typical. Coach. Oh, that's I see a great, it here. Yep, I do see it. That's a terrific question to wrap up on. Um, and and I'll tell you what, we'll send that coach that question to coach on the side, and he can decide whether he's going to answer it. <laughs> so it's not quite so public. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us and thanks to our uh, terrific panel. You guys are great and I'm uh, I'm really excited to hear how things have been going for you. I know it was tough this year and we're all hoping that uh, fall is just completely different and we just come roaring back strong. Um, please visit rit.edu slash alumni slash tigers slash staying home. Uh, you will see a whole listing of virtual events that are upcoming, and we want to include all of you in as many as well. Uh, do you all have any last comments you want to share with the audience? Go Tigers. I just would Go. like to say thank you to everybody for participating. And, uh, you know, we're really excited about the future of the program, and uh, we appreciate everybody's, uh, you know, commitment and um, the support of the staff, the team, the program in general and uh go tigers yeah that's you know. great it's been it's terrific to see so many alumni and uh even some parents who've joined in here i think that's super so um i'm sorry tim i interrupted you did you have anything you wanted to add oh no i was just saying ditto 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 is great <laughs> All right. So thanks everyone for joining us and you can exit the webinar just by closing your uh, browser window and do let us know what you thought through a brief survey that you are all going to receive in email. Thanks so much and have a wonderful weekend and please stay healthy. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia.